this is Russ. Yeah, I'm still on the road. <laughs> I think the last video you saw from me was probably the same ride because uh, I'm still here at the stoplight. I just split the video up. So yeah, this is a very busy street here. This is Palatine Road. Um, and it goes really fast. You don't want to be on Palatine Road with a bike. Um, it is a divided highway, so part of it is actually, I think like 30 miles an hour, the other part of it is like 45. But you know, 45 turns into 50 to 55 for some drivers. So yeah, you don't want to be on that road. <laughs> well, we got to pass through it though, but you know, being on this bike is a little bit tougher because I don't have gears. It's a single speed belt driven bike, but it is at least uh, pedal assisted with a motor, right? So there's a 350 watt motor in here. Don't remember what the battery is. It's 52 volts. Um, is, is it uh, seven point something? Uh, nine point, seven point something amp hours? I'm not sure. <laughs> All right, we, we're, we're gonna need to turn. But since I didn't put my arm out, I'm not turning, so these people are kind of looking at me. I'll, I'll swing around. Um, yeah, okay, I'm gonna go to this one area. I've done this swing around before. This is like uh, my place where I use a U-turn when I've missed the turn. And here it is. Yeah, I'll put a graphic up, let you know what the amp hours is on this battery. You just come down this little cul-de-sac, swing back around. <laughs> Easier for me to do this with this bike than sometimes with the uh, big fat tire bikes. These, uh, these thinner tires are more nimble. Fat tire bikes, yeah, I don't like doing U-turns or anything like that with them. I really don't. I usually hop off the bike, turn the bike around, hop back on and, and then move again. All right, now I got my, my arm out, I can, I can do this right turn. Anyway, the, the police officer said that um, intent was more important for him than the actual full stop. But again, not every, not every police officer will say that. Some of them will go by the letter of the law. But uh, yeah, stopping fully sometimes is an issue. Yeah, we're talking about stops again, I can't believe it. <laughs> it's always in my mind. Yeah, we'll never get rid of it because I keep bringing it up. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, it rained earlier today and I was wondering whether I would even be able to get outside to, to ride at all. It seems to have dried up all the way. I'm sure the grass is kind of wet, but um, the, the sidewalks and everything, the streets are all, all dried up already. It's supposed to rain again tonight. We'll be sleeping. <laughs> and then maybe on Sunday, I might have a good day um, to be able to do some stuff as well. And then I think it's gonna rain again on Monday. <laughs> Today's uh, Saturday, so in case you don't know. But I'm just trying to get these, these rides in here so I have some videos for you guys. Now in the past, I would look at my GPS to do this ride, but I've done these rides so often now over the last couple years, I kind of know my way around. So I know where I'm going. Now, other things, like if I was gonna go to the Botanic Garden, like I had done in the past couple years, I would definitely need my GPS on. Uh, luckily, with this Magic Cycle, um, if I was to take this bike, uh, it's plugged in. As you can see down here, I have my cell phone plugged into it. So it has a battery ability to be plugged in there. Oh, I'm looking at the uh, looking at the battery gauge on the meter here. It says it's down, I've got three out of the five bars still. But I know that this thing plummets quickly. So that three bar may not truly be what you think it is. It might actually plummet more. And the fact that the battery was essentially dead when I charged it up for this ride and I charged it up a couple days ago actually I may not have as much range as I think right now we've gone 7.1 miles between uh, the last uh, video we did which was you know just prior to me turning on the camera for this and now so 
Now, if the battery was brand new and fresh and everything, I, I was able to do 23 miles on this bike on uh, one charge. So theoretically, I should have some some mileage still. <laughs> but again, I don't trust them. I don't, I don't trust these meters. I don't think they're really as accurate as you might think they should be or could be. They, they, they could be better, let's, let's say that. So even though I have a, a gauge of 23 miles, um, might have to do another battery run and test to find out what is it getting this year, right? All right, so anyways, all the, all the bikes I have now all have the side view mirrors put on them. They all have uh, some type of bell on them. Uh, most often it's the, 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 the cheap $1.43 bell that I have. <laughs> is that what it is, $1.34? I, I can't remember what it is. You know, I, I bought some more recently uh, because one of our subscribers told me that he found it on, um, on a site. So I ordered 10 more, but I had previously ordered eight more on AliExpress, but it was, they were like $3 and 40 something cents or something like that, 370 something. I couldn't find it anywhere else. I said, I gotta get some, so I placed the order. And then when I saw the other one, I tried to cancel that order. And uh, technically they should have been able to cancel it, but I think the minute I told them I'm canceling, that's when they immediately shipped it and said, oh, sorry. Oh, you can return it back and we'll refund you. I'm not shipping it all the way back to China. <laughs> It'll cost me more money to ship it back to China than it is to keep it. So I think they knew we better ship this now or this guy is going to cancel because they already knew I was canceling because they, they took a while before they even tried to even to ship it. So I figured I'll just cancel it then. But no, it's coming in. So now I have to look at these, uh, these bells as a is a um, an average between the cheap and the more expensive so I, I don't know what it comes out to be it's, it's still like a three dollar and something dollar bell at this point still a good deal but uh, would have been better when it was a dollar uh, 34 <laughs> though I should have ordered more but you know how many bikes am I gonna keep I, I keep thinking you know even though we'll rotate bikes uh, I usually take everything off before I hand over the bike to somebody else so I'll, I'll be taking those bells off of it too and just put it on the next bike same thing with the saddles I put on I will take it off and put it on the next bike otherwise I'd be buying everything constantly for all the new bikes so you have to make a decision how many bikes are you able to keep in the house at any given time or you have to start rotating some out of there so um, currently if you're curious there's uh, there are 15 or 16 bikes in the house right now and um, there's a couple more coming so at least one more will be coming in what, what did we say June possibly two more in June so we'll see and who knows if anyone else offers something um, like I said uh, I turn down more than I take and those other ones that I do take um, has to have something special about it, or at least if I've heard of this brand before or something, you know. So, I think the bells are pretty good because I, you know, I do it um, a little bit in advance. And even from a distance, they can hear it. You know, the nice thing about these commuter bikes is that, uh, you could be on these uh, paths and nobody's gonna say anything because most people won't recognize this as a uh, as an e-bike. You really can't tell, really. I mean, if you looked at the handlebar, you can see that there's a display screen on here, but it's so small, most people probably wouldn't even see it as you're passing them. So they all think you're riding a regular bike and you're, you're, there's no problem, right? Yeah, but the bell, the bell does pretty good, listen.
It, it rings a long time. Sounds good too. <laughs> All right. Well, things are turning green. Looking at the, the grass, things are greening up. Trees are starting to get leaves. I can see that they're not just uh, branches now, they're like sticks. <laughs> I think the guy was taking pictures of his dog. <laughs> dog was looking at me, but it didn't try to attack. A lot of dogs come after you, so be careful. Dogs will usually try to get me. They'll try to they'll bark at you and and they'll uh, they'll try to get away from the owner to kind of chase you. I got chased once by a German Shepherd when I was younger. I was like in fifth grade or something like that. We were near Wrigley Field. My brother and I rode to Wrigley Field. Dog came out of nowhere, started chasing us. We ended up splitting up. Dog came after me. My brother went another way. I was a little kid. I don't know what's going on. I didn't know where I really was. Okay, this guy's letting me through, so I'm gonna go buy it. And um, if it wasn't for a car that almost hit the dog and honked on the horn real loud, scared the dog off, <laughs> that dog would have got me. And to this day, dogs still try to get me. They do. And we got a dog here. Let's see what this dog's gonna do. They'll usually at least look at you and try to pull forward, try to get to you. But we'll see what he does. Ah. Well, he looked at me, but he, he didn't pull away from his owner. So he was well behaved. What are these guys playing? Football? What are they doing? Rugby? I don't know what's going on. Playing something. <laughs> okay, now I've been trying a little thing differently for the audio in the last two videos, this video and the previous one. I have the uh, microphone attached to my visor. The visor is usually tipped down a little bit. I flipped it up a little bit more because when it's tipped down, I do get less sun in my eye. But that microphone is dead center between my eyes. So now it sticks way into my vision. And so it becomes a, it's, it's difficult to see with, uh, with the microphone and the, the windscreen on it in front of me. So I, I tipped it up a little bit. I hope that that doesn't affect the wind thing. I will know once I get home, I can check it out to see if it uh, sounds windier or not. But I did take the microphone off of the, uh, the, the visor uh, when I did the other review of the bike because um, that other helmet, the other helmet um, could not route the cable through the air vents of the helmet. The, the vents are thinner. The mic cable has a connection on it and it's thicker so it couldn't go through. So I just uh, simply um, put it on my chest and I could definitely hear the wind noise coming through that I normally don't hear when it's on the, uh, the visor. It's because I have the element of the, uh, of the microphone pointed a certain way to try to eliminate as much uh, wind noise as possible in addition to the, to the windscreen. And that's why my audios are usually pretty decent even when it's really windy. But when it was on my chest, it's open to everything. <laughs> and we definitely could hear wind noise going on. So, <laughs> in case you wonder why that audio wasn't as good, that, that's the reason behind it. Alrighty, I'm kind of tiring out. So I'm gonna say my goodbyes. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. I'll talk to you guys next time.